Hi, uh, so um, thanks for taking the time to get into this with me. What we're going to be discussing is uh, the solutions, the options out there available for e-commerce companies that have got a warehouse where they've also got a retail store or a trade counter uh, or a showroom attached to the e-commerce warehouse. What we're not going to be doing um, in this video is offering solutions to you know, companies that are doing something like a tool station within the UK where you have a, you know, a trade counter and all the inventory is stored within, um, within their branches, they call them. And uh, you'd walk in, you say, I want X, Y, Z, and they go off and find it for you. And it's like instantaneous, his list, and that gets assigned out to someone to go and pick. A little bit like Argos, you know, in the UK, again, you turn up, you take a ticket, you tell them what you want, they go out, pick it for you, and they drop it off, and they call you ticket number. That's not what we're covering in this. This is really about, um, uh, you know, you're a business that's focused on uh, e-commerce. That's what the majority of your warehouse inventory is for. But in addition to that, you've also got this retail store. And it's just understanding, like, as you introduce the discipline around inventory management, bringing in a WMS, what are some of the sacrifices that you may need to make? Or like, what's the downside of having a WMS alongside this retail outlet? And how do you combine that between the different systems? Because, you know, naturally, what's best for the warehouse, what's best for your e-commerce, your online customers, isn't necessarily going to be the same as what's best for those people that are just walking in off the street and going to make demands on your inventory. So we need to consider that you've got two kind of conflicting uh, demands from a customer service experience, and it's about finding the right balance. So the, the key variance that you really need to consider with this is, um, you know, first of all, is, is the inventory in the retail store available online? So I'm going to go into that first. And then second of all, um, is the inventory in the warehouse available for sale in the store? So are we going to have customers coming in and asking for things? And then we're going to have to have a way of removing that inventory to give it out to that customer. Um, the assumption there as well is that you're going to be doing some kind of point of sale, something to track the sales and take payment. You know, that could be the front end of the website or it could be a dedicated point of sale. And we'll get into that. Um, and then the third is if you've got inventory in the retail store and then it's not available online, you know, um, yeah, so let, let's get into it. So number one, inventory in the retail store is available for sale online. So the downside of, uh, let's start with the positive. Uh, the downside of doing this in PeopleBox is that if, if the warehouse management system is controlling the inventory in the retail store, yeah, and this is because you want that inventory available online, um, a WMS at, at its core is looking to control the inventory levels and it's looking to take control of the fulfillment process. Now, in order for it to do that, it needs to know where the inventory is. So our default approach for this is to know exactly what inventory you've got in the store. And the way this is, well, this can be done in two ways, just kind of to jump ahead to here. We've got different location type options. So one option is to set the, the retail store up as a bulk storage location. And what this means is that pickers won't actually be sent into the retail store to pick stuff. Um, you'll be able to generate a report of everything that's in the retail store that's been sold. So you could look at that in the morning, send someone out with that sheet or just with the tablet to move all that stock from the retail store, take it off sale so people don't buy it, and then move it across into a location within the warehouse proper. Um, that's one way of doing it. The other way is to set the retail store up as a pick location but obviously the downside of that is you're going to have you could have you know multiple pickers rolling through the uh the retail store to pick orders uh, on any given day so they're really your options um from a wms perspective you know you don't want a wms receiving a feed from a point of sale that's kind of confusing the job between the two systems um one kind of, you know, you, you could be very clever with your point of sale and connect that to your WMS and start to share things between. But I think you know, the aim of this video, I just want to give it to you kind of black and white. These are the most, you know, the basic options and what's good and bad about each of them. I don't want to get too far into come up with, coming up with pie in the sky uh, solutions that may or may not work. So um, the other part to this, which I was mentioning before, the downside is, if you have got that stock in the um, in the retail store, 
um, and then someone comes in off the street to buy, just thinking about their experience, we need a way to tell the warehouse system when that inventory gets removed from stock. So the easiest is to just have an Android device in the retail store. So when something gets sold as part of that process, you just scan the item and you remove it from the inventory. So you keep it up to date. You'll also be putting that item through your point of sale to actually take payment and give the customer a receipt. Um, yeah, that could be Shopify Pause, it could be Vend, it could be Square, it could be whatever. Um, one neat solution that Hatton Model, Model Railways use, um, the way that they do it is they actually print, uh, they set up their till system. So every time they sell an item, it prints the barcode of it. So that at the end of the day, they scan all of those items or you know, at, at lunch or intermittently or whatever, you just scan all the, the labels as a separate task and then you remove all of that inventory from stock in one go so you're keeping the inventory up to date um and i think the thing underlying all of this is that we're we're really focused on number one which is ha having accurate inventory uh on our website so that when customers buy we're not cancelling orders and having stock issues um so that, that's the, the first uh, part of the solution. The second part is what if you've got inventory in the warehouse that is available for sale in the store? Now, the big question here is what percentage of your total sales volume is people coming into the retail store? And if the reality is that you know, more than you know, a significant percentage of your volume is people turning up, let's say you used to just be a trade counter and then you made your inventory available online. Um, the likelihood is that you're going to need a slick process for those orders. And specifically for the PeopleVox WMS, you know, there may be other warehouse systems that do this much better, but um, you know, we're, we're not designed to be a, an order taker for a trade counter. First of all, it's a warehouse system. Um, um, in my experience, the flow of putting a website order on, let's say if you had a Magento or a Shopify store where you took the order and then you said, okay, can we pass that down to the WMS and then make that order available for picking and how do we prioritize that? My experience, all of that flow just takes too long. You know, if someone walks into a shop, they say, I want this, this and this, you want to send someone off to go and get it right there and then. You don't want to be waiting around you know, one minute, two minute while the system downloads everything and the sales order gets created and it comes through to the WMS. And then specifically with PeopleVox, they'd have to actually release it out to the warehouse. Um, yeah, and for that reason, if you if you actually want to do a trade counter and you want the WMS to do the pick, pack and ship, uh, PeopleVox definitely isn't a good, a good fit for you um, unless you're open to coming up with a workaround. So... Um, one potential workaround would be that um, you've got a way to create the requests of what you need. So if you had a kind of in-store system where people can say, I want you know, product X, Y, Z, it then prints a little like request ticket with the barcode of each item on it. Um, because then what we could do with the Android app is just uh, scan the, the barcode of the item and it would tell the, the picker where that item is stored in the warehouse. Um, this could also work well if you've got a warehouse where everything's in a fixed location, which is probably going to be quite rare if you're looking at a system like PeopleVox. Um, but if everything was in a fixed location, the picker may actually be able to remember where the item is. You know, it could suit you if you've got a very low SKU count. Um, and it, yeah, if you do have a very low SKU count, it's likely you've just got the stock on the shop floor. So um, the other the other bit is then uh, i guess this the speed at which the inventory needs to be located so uh you know, if you've got someone that was trying on lots of sizes of a product you know, if you if you had a fashion warehouse and then you had your fashion store on the side and you've got you know women coming in and saying i want this in try this on in two sizes or you know, men trying to remember what size shoe they are um they'd be going out and you'd be getting all the different shoes and bringing them through um, I think the crux of that is really, can you can you find a way to, to pass their requests through to the warehouse in an efficient way? And I wouldn't expect the WMS to provide that functionality necessarily. Um, so 
yeah, and I've talked about that here. So weather store customers are likely to be trying things on. Um, if the retail store is not available online, obviously there's nothing to solve. That's the easiest way to do it. If your retail store is across the road, down the road from your warehouse, uh, yeah, my advice here would be to try and focus the efforts in those two places. You know, straddled strategies are, are fraught with danger. Um, yeah, the more you can you can be clear about what your ambitions are for the different parts of the business, the better. Um, and the the brands we work with, where well, once they get that clarity and take things in certain directions, they they really look back. So. Uh, potential tech partners well you know be, being quite open here you could potentially look at other solutions that might encompass the the pause and you know some wms functionality all in one um deer inventory is probably worth evaluating um i don't think an erp system like netsuite is going to help here at all you know they don't have a point of sale which is going to be a problem so you've got this you know big uh, ERP that does everything, but it doesn't do a core part of the functionality very well at all. Um, yeah. Other options, you know, keeping the retail store inventory separate from the warehouse. Um, yeah, the, the challenge here is if, if you track the inventory of the store in a point of sale, and then you've got the WMS doing the warehouse, you need to combine those inventory figures for the website, for the e-commerce platform. But then when you take an order in either place, you need to route the order through. But you, know, you may not necessarily want the store picking stuff um, or you may not want to, you know, if a customer buys something, they may have ordered one thing from the shop, one thing from the warehouse. You'd probably want to bring them together. Um, and it's coming up with an elegant way to, way to do that. Um, that's tricky definitely tricky and you're, you're into like you know omni channel buy online pick up install stuff and the reality is you just got a retail store on the side of your warehouse like whatever your motivation for having that retail store um that isn't your core business that's not where the majority of your revenue should be coming from um if you're selling online that retail store is serving the people in the local area the website can sell to anyone um and then standalone point of sales yeah, that you could evaluate just to take the payment. Um, yeah, obviously Shopify's big advantage is they've got the built-in point of sale. Um, Vend and Square are other options to consider for this. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's been useful going through that. If you've got any questions, um, yeah, hit us in the comments. We're always happy to, to review stuff. And uh, if you've got any ideas that could solve this better as well, always open to them. Uh, we definitely haven't got this nailed. Um, you know, by and large, you know, my expertise focuses on the e-commerce warehouse part and making sure we can fulfill orders that are coming in online um, rather than looking into um, the retail side of things. Um, so yeah, 